three, two, one, and we're live. So I didn't plan originally to be doing this stream today because I had other plans, but those plans changed. So here we are once again. Uh, welcome to HeroQuest fans here on Twitch. Um, so <laughs> I in, in my previous stream, we had all kinds of technical issues, and that does happen from time to time. So it is what it is. We roll on forward. Uh, today, I'm doing a discussion here about what I wanted to talk about originally. Well, originally, I wanted to talk about the remake HeroQuest uh, 2021 release, um, but I won't be getting that until Tuesday. So I may end up doing a video on Wednesday uh, talking about it. But for now, this is the long belated part two of my discussion of Battle Masters. And of course, to remind everyone or introduce those who didn't uh, see the previous stream that I did on Battle Masters, Battle Masters is a simplified war game, fantasy war game created by the makers of Hero Quest and even marketed that way. So, Milton Bradley, owned by Hasbro, um, working with um, Games Workshop, who of course is responsible for Citadel miniatures in the Warhammer fantasy world. And also, the game is designed by Stephen Baker. I haven't really heard Stephen Baker talk about Battle Masters much before. He always talks about Hero Quest, but this came out in 1992, and it wasn't quite as popular. And I really wasn't interested in it for a long time, especially because it was so expensive uh, compared to Hero Quest. It was harder to find. But then I found one for quite a reasonable price, and I bought it in two segments, really, because um, the first the first package that I got was missing quite a few pieces, even though it was claimed to be complete. The seller gave me a generous refund. Uh, he almost refunded half the price, which was not what I was expecting, but, I mean, it's very generous. Um, so thanks to them. And then with that leftover money, I was able to track down the remaining components and get those. And I've even done some repair job on some pieces, which I plan to show you here. The only thing that is not yet complete are the stickers. So the way this system worked is you get these figures, uh, plastic miniatures. Um, you've got the chaos side, so the bad guys, and then the imperial side, the good guys. Sounds familiar to HeroQuest fans, you know, because it's the empire versus chaos. Um, but they have all these stickers. So... I'll just show you. See these flags? So every unit has a flag, a banner that designates who they are. And you have to match them up with these bases, so these plastic bases. This is where the units go on. And you can see I didn't unfold the entire battle mat because it's humongous, this uh, vinyl plastic sheet. Um, <laughs> it's like four and a half feet by four feet, I think, or four feet by four feet. I haven't measured it. You can ask uh, James Rolfe about that. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's humongous, and you put the stuff out, um, but you put the figures, plastic figures on here, and they move around these hexes, these hex shapes. And there's five specific missions that you can play in a row. Um, so you've got a series, basically a campaign. Um, that's That's really what you're supposed to play. You're supposed to play them in order and the units start out in different places or you can just have a battle. And when you just have a battle, it's just a single fight and you decide um, who's going to go first. Well, it's always chaos that goes first. So whoever is playing as the chaos side goes first. They pick their side. So one of the four corners of the battle mat. And so when they pick that side, then the Imperial Army goes on the opposite side. So they go unit, 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 until everybody's got their entire army out, and then you fight. It's all based on drawing cards, to so there's no rolling for initiative if you're a D and D fan, nothing like that. Um, you definitely want to shuffle those cards up. Now the, as I've said before, some of the details, the Imperial Army is actually smaller than the Chaos Army, so there's fewer units. But as many have pointed out, the cannon, the mighty cannon that the good guys have, is really powerful potentially, because it can fire up to eight hexes away, and it can destroy a unit like in one shot. 
but they've only got one. Now there are there are reinforcement packs that you can buy, which are so rare that most people don't have them. Uh, they give you additional units, but that's kind of what it is. And if my voice sounds a little off, it's just because I was staying up late looking for looking for updates to the new Hero Quest. So I apologize for that. We'll just muddle through. Anyway, so you've got these cool little stickers. Now the problem with stickers is, you know, the person that put them on, the kid that enjoyed the game first, may not have put them on perfectly. And they're just kind of a glossy thing. What I want to do is I want to print out my own sticker sheet and maybe reapply some of the ones that are kind of off. Um, but you, let me show you something. So here you've got, this is one of the new units that I bought, the replacement units. So you can see that's a gob, Goblin Wolf Rider. And of course, on board James, they made a big joke about this little third leg that is coming down here. That's uh, part of the sprue. I mean, you cut the plastic character off of the sprue with a scissors or a uh, hobby knife, you know, get your parents to help you out. Um, but what they're supposed to do is it's supposed to slot into um, the mount that they're riding. And I didn't get the mounts out. Well, there's some uh, giant wolves that they ride. So what a lot of people did is they just broke it off completely. And I'm not sure the proper way, actually. Because it, it seems like if you leave just a little bit of that sprue left, it aids with securing him to his base. But it just looks weird to have that. Because all the other units, so the, the Knights and the uh, Champions of Chaos, who also ride horses, they all have a little appendage that sticks out. A little peg. So I'll show you what I mean here. So check that out. So the Knight has a little peg, and then that helps him stay on his horse. Because otherwise, you kind of got to like get him on there. Well, the other solution is to take this stuff, the Sticky Tack, it's like this little uh, poster tack. It has so many different names. Sticky tack, poster tack, um, poster putty, uh, wall putty. But it's just this uh, gummy kind of like, almost like an eraser, but it's it's you can knead it. And you can stick, stick it on the figure like that. And then just kind of stick it on. Now, you don't want to leave it on forever because it'll probably leave an oily residue after a long, long time. I'm not sure how long. But, you know, for a game that lasts an hour or two, probably no big deal. So I'm going to go get those Wolf Riders, and I'm going to show you what some of these units look like. Oh, but to my original point. So notice how this guy has a shield design. That's just a sticker. So not as cool as having to paint it yourself, but much easier for a little kid or somebody who just wants to get into the battle. Hurry up. And that will tell you what unit. So there's the unit. Ta-da! So that guy is intended to go with that unit there. Whereas this guy doesn't have one. Now, the good thing about this, though, the missing stickers, is that you can, whoops, you can just print out anything you want. Print it out on glossy uh, sticker paper and just put that on there. Or, if you want, you could paint it. Uh, paint whatever you want. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out stickers that are similar to the originals and just put them on there, apply them. And I might uh, print out some alternate stickers just for fun. I think it'd be cool to just print it out on, uh, oh, what's that material? They have this plastic material that it'll kind of stick like with water, but you can just peel it right off. It's not like glue. Or I guess you could use, you know, you could use Velcro. I don't know. There's a couple of different things you could do where you could have a decal that would just come off and you could put whatever you wanted on it. I don't know, but probably just to make it match because I'm like restoring the set. Well, anyway, I'll be right back in a moment here just to show you the uh, Wolf Riders. So pardon me for just a moment. Sorry for any microphone uh, static here that you might hear. Okay, 
So welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. I'm back to discuss more about Battle Masters, which is related to the world of HeroQuest. It's set in the same fantasy world. So what we have here are the Wolf Riders. Now you may see, gee, I have a huge army of these giant wolves. Well, the reason for that is because when I ordered the replacement parts, uh, to complete my set of Battle Masters. Um, the guy who was selling the Wolf Riders refused to just sell me these guys because I was missing three of these. And he said, well, each one comes with a wolf. It's like, okay, okay fine. So I've actually got some extra wolves. So I guess, you know, it, you can put some extra wolves on. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So the proper way to slot these in is this faces towards the person who's controlling the chaos side. So we'll just kind of slot that in there like that. Now, Battle Masters aficionados can tell me, oh, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. I've never actually played this game. I've never had the pleasure of playing it either on the floor, which kids can do, or on a table, which adults with uh, old knees would probably prefer, a big enough table. In the wargaming world, they have this whole big thing. It's kind of like model trains. I mean, it's a big, huge, and expensive hobby. This is Battle Masters is nice because it all comes in one box. I mean, for 80 bucks, you can get a, an absolutely complete set, uh, like I've done. Um, you, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get some uh, two by or not two by four saw horses. So you got the wood that comes down like that, and you got two of those. So two of those, and then a a beam that goes across a board and you get two of those sawhorses and then you put like a big uh, I guess you can put a, a bunch of a length of boards over the top or a big huge piece of plywood I suppose and as long as it's four feet by four feet and then you put the battle mat on top make sure it's secure because otherwise all your stuff's gonna clatter to the floor <clears throat> but that's what a lot of people do so build a big so if you don't have a giant uh, giant table actually when I was a kid, we did have access to a giant table. Of course, you got to clear away the game to eat dinner or whatever else. But uh, that's the way it is. Okay, so you've got the wolf riders on their base, or the wolves actually. And then the goblins are going to ride them. And I'll show you, I actually did do some restoration work on these. And I'm not a super, you know, awesome person at like sculpting. I'm just, just starting it. But take a look here at what I've done. So I'll show you the the original set that I got. All these guys, all these goblins, didn't have the spear. So from his fist up was just nothing. So what I did, and you can't, you can see it's not perfect. I took a uh, so you've got these paper clips that have kind of a rubbery coating. There's big ones and there's small ones. So I got a small. I have a whole huge, it's like a big plastic jar of these um, paper clips. And they've got a plastic coating. And some of them are green. And I thought, hmm, I wonder what the size is. So I, I straightened one out and I put it there and thought, gee, it's, it's about the same thickness. And I did have to trim a little bit of the, the bottom. And I cut it with wire cutters. And I took a small hand powered, so it's not powered at all. It's just a, a twisty drill like a metal drill with the smallest bit I could and I drilled into his fist there and I inserted the paper clip and I uh, secured it with just a little squirt of Vallejo, not a paid sponsor, Vallejo uh, plastic putty, which is this like acrylic putty. And so it, it was, I was able to insert it in there and, and let it dry and paint it. So it's, not a perfect match, but close enough uh, so with some acrylic paint. And this is green stuff. So green stuff is this uh, clay, which I'm just beginning to work with. So it's not super perfect and awesome, but good enough for government work, you know. So you mix the blue with the, with the yellow, and it forms green, and then it hardens. And so you just put a little bit there. So it kind of looks like a Stone Age spear. So it's not, not a perfect match, but I really like it. How it turned out. Now, then I, I picked up, uh, I had to order these, these cocktail spears. Look at that. 
I mean, it's not perfect. But what I could do is uh, clip this off and make a different spearhead that looks a little. But I don't know. I kind of like this. Maybe uh, maybe I could just kind of like whittle whittle a little bit of that away and kind of make a, a closer match, or or use this and maybe trim it just so it looks a little more crude. But anyway, this is just plastic. These are meant for uh, spearing your olives or making your club sandwich at the at the cafe at the bar at the bar if you're from a certain part of the country. Anyway, so enough about that. Let's uh, let's try to build these wolf riders. So let me just try my little sticky tack theory because I haven't done this yet. Because normally you kind of just got to get them to straddle it and it doesn't. Oh, gee, that worked better than I thought. Look at that. Now you can see he's he's sitting on some a little white pillow, but that's okay. So let's see. Looks like I need more sticky tack. But you can see there's there's a little hole there. So you're just going to put that on the hole maybe and do it like that. So the guy with the shield is leading the charge. And my, oh, there's my piece of sticky tack. I'm going to split. I actually didn't need as much as I thought. You just need a tiny bit. Now, if it gets stuck inside the, the wolf, you can just pop those two halves apart because these are not glued down. <clears throat> the thing I like about HeroQuest and Battlemasters is a lot of the stuff can be adjusted later. So you don't have to glue everything. You can just use sticky tack or you can just pop it in there. And it holds up pretty well because the plastic is... I don't know if this is styrene or not, but it's uh, kind of a harder plastic. Now that means if you bend something, it's going to have stress fractures. But look at that. Look at these guys. They're ready for war. Poor little goblins. They never get enough credit. Uh, so I hear in the new the remake of HeroQuest, uh, they took out the line where it says that the orcs have enslaved many goblin tribes. So the, the poor goblins, they didn't even want to fight. They're just being forced to fight. Um, but it also says that they're they're cruel, so they a lot of them enjoy it. Yeah, there's an effort. It seems like in the new Hero Quest to kind of rehabilitate the orcs and maybe even the goblins and say, hey, they're not all evil. Just just the one. Whoops, just the ones that were allied with the evil sorcerer. But I've all, I've often kind of thought about that sort of part of the mythology is um, how did they how did they go wrong? Were they were they born evil? Or, you know, were some promises or threats that led them far from home, you know, that kind of thing. Because I know in the Tolkien mythology, the orcs are either, um, basically they're mutants, so they're mutated elves, or they were just created um, specifically to fight for the bad guys. But... Warhammer fantasy is kind of its own thing. I guess in the later Warhammer fantasy mythos, uh, the orcs are mushrooms, believe it or not. They're like a fungus. So they just, they're just grown uh, for battle. Um, but, you know, if they're natural creatures, or even if they are mutants, uh, the question is, could you write a story about an orc that uh, maybe was able to resist his programming or maybe an effort to convert the orcs, to change them uh, from just murder machines into something that could fight for the side of good or or at least diminish the threat so i'm coming i'm coming up with a quest with something like that to try to explain it because um you know there's always the question of the big uh big dumb army of drones that the good guys fight and can slaughter without without thinking without worrying but there's also the tragedy of you know the stormtrooper that didn't uh didn't want to fight but he had no choice he didn't know any better so this one still has some sprue on it, but I just wanted to show you what it what it would have looked like originally. So I don't know. Part of me wants to just cut that off and make it perfect, but uh, at the same time, I'm kind of curious if it would actually just fit on its own. So we've got these other wolves, and actually some of the wolves, a lot of these pieces are. I mean, they look gray, dark gray, but when you put them side by side, some of them are darker or lighter. So it makes it a little easier to tell like what unit you're working with. Okay, I don't think this is going to work. It's like he's balancing on it. Well, you know what? I'm just going to do those later, but let's let's try one of these guys here. 
So I tried making a little uh, appendage there with some green stuff, but I don't think it's working that well. So we'll just, just break that off. Just like clay, really, just like clay. So we put that guy on there like that. There he is, ready to fight with his reconstructed spear made of a paper clip and a piece of clay. So we've got the other unit of wolf riders, so we'll put him right there in the center as the leader. Now what you're supposed to do is when the unit takes damage, you take a skull tile, which the skull tiles look very similar to Hero Quest, and you put put that on there on the front is how I would do it. And then when it takes three hits of damage, you just remove it from the from the board. So it's or from the battle mat. So there's no reason to just, you know, yank him off and say, oh, you killed one, you killed one. Oh, now he's dead. Just put damage. So the unit takes enough damage and they just, they retreat, they give up or they just die. Whatever, whatever you decide to do. So we'll just put the other wolves in there. Actually, here's what I wanted to try. So let's, uh, let's try to cram it in there. Oh, he lost a tail. Oh no. Well, good thing I've got extra wolves. Okay, well, be careful of that. Don't put pressure on it. Gee, that's the first one I've broken. Okay, well, he lost his tail in battle. Press down on the tab only. Yeah, for this, I'm probably going to have to drill into his uh, his uh, backside and uh, put a wire to glue that in there because that's not going to stay. Okay, the dangers of, of battle. Now, if we put another wolf there there's only supposed to be three on here so if I overload it it's gonna happen okay there's another wolf so maybe he doesn't have the riders but he's got the he's got the animals to fight Oop. oh no Ugh, this is not quite working out how I hoped, but it's kind of working. Oh, there we go. All right, check that out. Now that looks menacing. There's one guy, but he's got a whole bunch of wolves. And one of them's missing a tail. So, you know, he's not happy about that. So there we go. There's our wolf riders. We got our other wolf riders. This guy didn't stay on. So maybe use a little bit more sticky tack than I'm using. So there you go. And these guys would be, normally would be on there. So I wanted to set up the whole entire army, but then I thought, you know what? I'm going to do all that, and then I'm going to have to just put it away because I don't have anybody to play with. <laughs> and if you're going to do a, a live game, like through Zoom or something with this, um, you're going to need probably some more space and better cameras. Okay, so what's the unit? What would a wolf rider look like? Okay, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that's the right one. So Battlemasters uh, veterans can laugh at me because I'm doing it wrong. But let's say you just insert that there. And actually, if you have some small bamboo skewers, you can cut them to length and you can actually insert them in there pretty easily. And then put your own print out your own uh, banner to put there. Okay, so that's dark gray. I think uh, in the in the European version of this game of Battlemasters, um, gosh, in, in Germany it's called the Claymore Saga, which I think is really great. The Claymore Saga, um, which is awesome. Um, these are these are beige, which actually would match the bamboo skewers, and the bases are green instead of tan and uh, or khaki beige whatever and and dark brown so let's see uh, i don't know which one it is so i'm just going to put this one in it's probably the wrong one i could look at the box to refer to the exact unit designations because they're all on the box but if you don't know i'm just going to say it's that one and you can laugh because you know viewer I'm strictly a, a newbie when it comes to the world of battle masters. So there we go. Wolf riders. Wolf riders. And there's one lonely wolf, one extra wolf that doesn't fit anywhere. 
just put them in there. Don't press on the tail, now that I've learned. Maybe on the body and then on the slot itself. But this does open the world up because if you really wanted to spend a lot of money, which I don't, you could take any of these slotted characters with their slot and just put it in a regular base, which I've seen people do. And so you could use these units in something else. I don't know about the idea of having a, a mounted warrior running down a hallway in Hero Quest, but some of these you could you could certainly do do things with. <laughs> there we go. I just put the plastic spear inside the wolf. That doesn't doesn't look good. Okay, what have we got next? Oh, I just want to show you a few other things. So here's the uh, here's the original ogre for Battle Masters. He's humongous, the ogre champion. In the expansions, uh, which is the Chaos Warband and the Imperial Lords, in the Chaos Warband they give you more of these ogres, but they call them ogre mercenaries. Which I always thought was that was interesting. In Hero Quest, you could have um, ogres that you could hire, but you never actually get to hire any. You just fight them, so you just do your own quest. Well, somebody made a 3D resin printed version of the ogre champion and they made it smaller for use in hero quest see how they put that base on there and of course i just painted it to kind of look like the ogres from against the ogre horde or from uh, the elf quest pack so i'm going to call him the ogre battle master or he could be an ogre mercenary but notice how he's got this uh this armor this looks different than the ogres that are in that pack actually so you might think superficially, oh, it's just the same old guy, but they actually used uh, different different molds. And this guy, his arms don't move, his head doesn't move. It's just it's just two pieces clamped together. So he's pretty solid. It's pretty pretty cool looking, actually. Pretty ugly. Okay, so one unit I completely for, completely forgot to show you in the first Battle Masters video were the Chaos Archers. Now the Chaos Archers. I always forget to check the check the uh, chat to see if we have anybody live here. So I do apologize if I missed you. It's not my intention. I mean, people like the interactivity, right? I'm new to Twitch. I'm still learning the ropes. Let's see. Do we have anybody? Originally, I canceled the stream. So if you if you didn't realize we were streaming, that's okay. Canceled the stream, so... All right, we're just going to mute that. Okay. So for now, we don't have anybody. That's okay. You can watch it on replay. All right. Here are the Chaos Archers. So this is a new unit that was not previously revealed in Hero Quest, But you'll notice something. See that armor they're wearing with the skull and everything? To me, that reminds me a lot of the Chaos Warlock character from Hero Quest. And some people have adapted these these punk guys into Hero Quest um, as characters. So anyway, you've got a bunch of these these gray figures, and so they would go into this one here. So you kind of slot these guys in, and actually, I think you do five of them: two, three, four, five. Okay. And now there's different ways you can arrange them. But you're really supposed to do... them in a certain arrangement. I didn't grab my little instructions. I'm just going to do them like this because there is a proper way to do them. And then there's a just kind of slapdash version. I think you're supposed to put three in the back and two in the front. Or did I get that backwards? Don't press on the bow or you might break it. <laughs> Just kind of like use the body. So that's how I would do it. Two in the front, front, three in the back. And you could do it the opposite way. So that's Battle Masters, Chaos Archers. Now, the Chaos Archers, they can shoot two hexes away with their arrows, and their arrows can go right over the top of barriers, barricades, marshes, 
they can shoot over the top of friendly units. Um, they can shoot over the top of enemy units and just hit whatever you want, but up to two squares away. Whereas the good guys have crossbowmen, which can hit three squares away. And then I've got the cannon, which can, which can shoot eight squares away. So the Imperial side does have an advantage. So there's the, that's what the Imperial archers look like. And these bows are not in good shape. A couple of them are broken. So I'm going to have to work on ways to fix those. I might try the uh, old technique where you take uh, green stuff and blue stuff and you make a mold from a good piece and then you make your own piece and then you stick it on there and you kind of mold it on. So I'm still learning about all that stuff, still practicing training. Now someone did do a 3D print version of this guy to use in HeroQuest. See that? They just made him just, just a tad bigger and put him on a base. And I think they did a pretty good job because that, that looks like a type of character that you could put in. And this could be a mercenary that you could hire. Now, what about combining Hero Quest with uh, Battle Masters? Well, what you could do is just, just put them on there. And I've toyed with the idea of creating my own rules, <laughs> which is funny because I haven't even played the real game yet, is to say, okay, you've got a hero because there's no heroes in this. There's no magic. Um, maybe you've got a wizard and you could just put him in there and say, okay, well now that he's there, he can use spells. Or maybe this unit gets a bonus because you've got a barbarian that's fighting with you and he rallies everybody. So anyway, I'm kind of working on that. Other people have come up with their own homebrew house rules like that. And I, I love that kind of thing. The, uh, the whole homebrewing thing was not as emphasized as strongly in battle masters as like hero quest. Cause in hero quest, they give you a blank quest to make your own stuff. Whereas in Battle Masters, it's kind of like, well, you just have battles, and you have more battles, and still more battles. But you could come up with your own scenarios if you wanted. There's the crossbowman, the Imperial crossbowman. Kind of a cool-looking guy. And this is different than the Hero Quest uh, character, because the Hero Quest character, he's got his weapon on the side. He's got like a, a removable thing. This is just one piece. But I, I like this pose. It's, it's cool. It's dynamic. Um, here's the Hero Quest version that someone made, a homebrew. Notice how he's bigger and he's got the big base so that you could use him in Hero Quest. But this is a homebrew. This is the real thing. So it's bright red plastic. So 3D printing's come a long way, but it's still not quite there. So if you can get molded plastic, injection molding, that's that's the best stuff for these type of things. Unless you're working with metal, I, I don't, but Old school, uh, old school uh, war gamers certainly would. They would prefer that, I'm sure. So here's some of the other figures that I repaired. So these are the Imperial Lords, or the Imperial... Actually, these are Imperial Knights. So they, they mix the terminology. You've got the, um, the Imperial Knights and the Lord Knights. And then you've got the Imperial Lords expansion, so whatever. But here's, here's one of the guys that came with the original set. So see how he's got this long, thin, plastic lance. So the knights use spears called lances, of course, from history. And it's all bent up. And a lot of these infamously are broken. But look at that cool spearhead on, on the end of his lance. So they were in fairly good shape, even if they're missing their... So this is just this little sticker, missing their stickers and, and so forth. So here we've got more of these knights oh wait a minute something's different okay so this guy this was my attempt to restore his lance see that so the head is just made out of green stuff that i painted and this part here i actually got another one of these these skewers except i mean you can buy all kinds of these little plastic skewers these uh, drink spears or cocktail spears whatever you want to call them they, they, they sell ones that look like plastic swords, like medieval swords or renaissance swords. Uh, so not the ones that are made of bamboo or whatever. Although I guess you could use those too. You could use a toothpick. But I like to buy the swords and then just kind of whittle them down a little bit. Kind of clip it. And then I used my tiny little drill to drill down in there. So just like the Goblin Wolf Rider. Put some acrylic in there. And fix the lance. And it's just about... it's just about perfect really at least from a distance i i like it i i sometimes enjoy buying like stuff that's broken just so i can fix it 
Uh, it's kind of weird like that, but it's kind of enjoyable to kind of come up with something. I mean, if they were selling these brand new in the store, yeah, I'd just buy a brand new one. But that's how it is. Battle Masters is not being re-released. Only Hero Quest, as far as we know. This was one that came with the set pre-painted. So I think the person did a good job. They gave, decided to give him shiny armor. And actually, the paint job they gave him is very similar to what's on the box. So Games Workshop always... The things they love to do are sell miniatures and get you to paint it. Because they sell their own paint. So they show you on the box a suggestion of how to paint it. And that's what they decided to do. I'm not sure because I, I could just paint them all to match. But that's a big job to paint a big army. And so if, since I've never had this game, I didn't have it as a kid. It's kind of like I don't have the same nostalgia that I would for Hero Quest, where it's like, eh, I kind of want it to look how it looked when I was a kid. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'd paint this stuff or not. I think I probably won't. Um, just kind of like leave it as is. But if I 3D printed something, I'd probably paint that. Because there you can you can screw up and not worry about it. So there's all the flags. But yeah, a lot of these shields are just blank. So we need to print those out. I actually found some of the decals. They were just kind of loose. They were kind of dry. And if you use like a glue stick, it doesn't really stick very well to the plastic. So you probably have to use something more permanent. Which I'd rather just get sticker paper and, and start over with that. Uh, but I think the little kid that owned this before, back in the day, uh, stuck some of those stickers on the box. So I may or may not be able to peel them off. and There might not be any adhesive left. So what you're supposed to do is, is take the horse, this trusty steed, and then he easily sticks on it. Much easier than the wolf riders. So there's the, the Imperial Knight. And there's his base. And we'll just kind of stick him on there, like, like so. Ta-da! And really, you're supposed to stick with the same color of horse to match the unit, but just for fun, just for this video, I'm just going to mix up the colors. So they give you more colors in Battle Masters than in Hero Quest. You've got, you know, bright yellow. You've got bright blue. Whereas in Hero Quest, you had kind of an icy blue color that was used for uh, the, some of the expansions, and you had, um, of course, red for the heroes, green for the orcs, goblins, and femurs, or femurs, as some people call them, or femurs, as other people call them. And you had a yellowish white, or just white, for the undead, so zombies, mummies, and skeletons. And then, you, of course, you had gray for the chaos warriors, which, you know, you still get chaos warriors. So there's our tricolor group of knights, and... I'm just going to totally mix it up. I don't even care. I'm just going to, just for demonstration purposes. So all you veterans can laugh about the fact that I've got, you know what, what this is, is so the other knights, like their units got killed. And so they had to regroup and, and reorder. So the three of them got together and now they're going into battle. The survivors, the veterans, and actually there's a little, uh, tile you can put in there that shows that they're an elite unit because they've survived a battle if you're doing a campaign but look at that look at those little teeth in there that'll make a mark on your cardboard so it's just a little cardboard tile so I would actually like maybe just put it on the side or on the front somewhere just put it somewhere else other than right in there unless you don't mind they should have made them out of plastic or something that wouldn't get chewed up but anyway it's it's kind of a cool looking thing but yeah normally you'd have the same color for all those guys so there's your there's your imperial knights and i just dumped my archers everywhere so i'll put those guys back but yeah i had fun repairing the lance i i had seen a few other people online who had repaired broken swords broken spears on their hero quest figures and i tried it myself and it worked there's a piece of a broken lance. There was just a little piece hanging off, and I just had to clip it off because I really couldn't work with that. What some people have done is they'll take pieces of sprue, like plastic sprue that are left over after you cut your figures out, and you can use that sprue to rebuild stuff. So there's all kinds of techniques people have come up with. It's fun to see the solutions other people have come up with. It's kind of like that guy uh, who does like action figure work, uh, Toy Poloi on YouTube. He's pretty cool. 
he's done all kinds of stuff with, and I, I've used some of his techniques, but he works more with like action figures, like 80s, 70s and 80s toys, as opposed to like miniatures. I mean, these are toys, but I mean, miniatures that you use for like war gaming or uh, board games and so forth. But I like those little hobby because you could just throw your broken toys away and just buy new ones that are perfect. But why not salvage the little broken toy and give it some love and maybe some kid or even some nostalgic adult can enjoy it. So there we've got all our flags there. And little spear again. I'll have to put all this away. Okay, so as far as the knights go, it was really just that one that I had to that had to repair. The green stuff for the tip, spear tip. But I mean, I could replace that spear tip with that one there, see, to make it look a little bit more like the official one, the original. Because really, are you going to 3D print that? I don't think so. So it's similar. Yeah. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you from Battle Masters here is the, the chaos equivalent of the knight. So they're called champions of chaos. I think in the other video I called them lords of chaos or chaos lords or chaos champions, but they're actually champions of chaos is how they're officially called. So there we go. Champions of Chaos. Oh yeah, and I forgot. The Chaos Archers, they actually have two two different units. So and they give names to all of these units. It's funny though, you could print out your own sticker, you could put your own name on there if you were wanting to. Because really it's a, it's meant it's meant to be a game for two players, one army versus the other. But you can play with teams. So you can assign different units. So Little Billy gets to control the knights. Uh, little Stevie gets to control the ogres, and little Jenny gets to control the you know whatever. You can you can just do all that fun stuff. So here's one of the bad guys, the chaos. Notice he looks like a chaos warrior. Focus. Okay, there we go. Looks kind of cool. Looks kind of weird not on his horse though, right? So let's get the uh, horses out. Somewhere here. There we go. Previous up, a previous owner did paint some of these, so I think I showed these in the previous video. But oops, there's a painted horse. Not bad, not bad. Not saying I can do better. I paint the stuff in solid colors usually, just because I'm trying to match to what I remember as a kid with these games. But since I don't have as much of an attachment to Battle Masters. Maybe I would paint some of these, some of these horses, but I don't know. They, they just look, they look pretty good on, without the paint too. And I, that's something I appreciate about Citadel miniatures is they made their stuff to look good, period, painted or not, as opposed to, well, this is not that good. I'm just going to cover up the flaws with paint, which you can do too, which is what I like about 3d printing. I mean, you print the thing out, it doesn't look perfect, but once you paint it up, yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So we'll just put him on. Let's put him on a different colored horse so it looks a little more interesting. There. So there's the Champion of Chaos. If we were to put him on his base, it would look like this. Like that. Charging into battle. Did I match him with the right one? Focus. Well, anyway. Okay. Good. <clears throat> and I did repair one of these guys. Now, with this guy, I didn't do an extensive repair job. I really just... Gee, which one was it? <laughs> I did such a good job, I can't even tell. Okay, that actually is the one that I repaired. See that break in his lance. I just 
super glued it on there. Actually, it's this plastic glue specifically for models, so it works works fairly well. It doesn't leave a lot of residue, but it, it kind of melts the two plastics and they bond together, assuming you give it enough time to dry. But there's the other two Champions of Chaos. Now, the bad guys only get one of these, so they don't have, but I mean, they have the Wolf Riders, so you'd feel pretty good too if you had the Wolf Riders by your side, right? Okay, so we've got the brilliantly painted. I mean, just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you can't have a cool horse, right? Cool war horse. So check those guys out. They got their fake unicorn armor. And that's a pretty intimidating unit, actually. So these guys, these two guys will go head to head on the battlefield. Yep. So you can see my big mess. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Not the greatest, but this is just a little card table. Okay, so what, what else did I do? So I got some more orcs. Actually, just one. I was only missing one orc. So there he is. Ta-da! That's no, not the exact one. But these are what the Battlemasters orcs look like. I, I kind of prefer the Hero Quest orcs. But these guys are, they've got all their armor. They're a little bulkier. Um, their eyes look a little different. But there they are. So if I were to put the orcs out, let's see here. So technically, this is the right one for the orcs. There's going to be five of them. So let's see, three in the back, two in the front. Let's put them in there like that. I've seen people put them in all kinds of different formations, but actually doing this right. Oh. Duh. <laughs> Sorry. I started doing it the uh, Board James way. I'm entertained by Board James, but obviously he's going for comedy as opposed to reviewing a, a board game specifically. So really what you're supposed to do is put two in the back, two in the front, and like one in the middle. Whoops. Gotta watch what I'm doing here. Get the right shields. There we go. So that's how we're looking so far with four orcs. And then we just put the fifth one right there. And that works because if we do it like this, you can still put the damage skull there and there. And then, of course, when he takes the third hit, the unit's destroyed, so you don't have to worry about, well, I can't fit it there. Because otherwise, you're going to have to cram him in here or cram him in there. But that works just fine. I kind of feel like the guy in front should have, like, a flag or something. But anyway, there's the orcs. Let's put the orcs right there. And in Battle Masters, they say half of a hex is still considered a hex. So if he's off the edge of the board, he's still on the board. Can't go off the board. Can't go off the grid. Let's put the extra horses away. So the other orcs that you've got have this other symbol. And I, I had all of these. I wasn't missing any of them. So I didn't have to order any replacement parts. It's got a little angry moon. That guy is definitely not Mac tonight, if anybody remembers that reference. Now I've got a second little spear. I, I bought a whole pack of these. So I've got plenty to work with. Ah, goblins. Okay, so the goblins, the little bitty goblins, these are even smaller than the, believe it or not, than the uh, Hero Quest goblins. And some people prefer that. They like the small, you know, little tiny, itty bitty goblins. But there's two kinds of goblin here as far as their shields go. So I'll just show you those there. Let's 
So you get a bunch of those. So you got the goblin wolf riders, and then you've got the regular goblins who are just on foot. So those are orcs, goblins. Goblins of Uglub. If I can even say that. Goblins. Little gobs. Gobs of goblins. You just throw them on there. This is going to be the first time I've actually put most of these guys on their bases. I put a couple on just to make sure I knew what I was doing. Or I could pretend I knew what I was doing. That's really the key. Fake it till you make it, right? They say setup time for this game is like 15 minutes. So clearly I am not quite up to tournament speed, but I'm working on it. Let's see, three in the back, two in the front, or three in the front, two in the back. It's kind of up to you. Are they a well-organized militia, or are they a chaotic warband? You decide. So I could do it like that. Three in the front, or maybe like so. Don't grab them by the sword. Okay. That looks a little more official. And then you can put your damage tiles there and there. Still have room. And then of course they would need their flag and so forth, but I'm not gonna do all that right now. And then the only other thing that was missing, well, you know what, as long as I'm showing you everything I do encourage you to look back at my other Battle Masters video. It's a little more interesting, talking about the history. So these are the Beast Men. They're kind of these Minotaur, Bull Man kind of monsters for the Chaos side. And they're in black plastic. The only black figures that we got for Hero Quest were these kind of prototype or beta type uh, figures that people gave away at conventions, or I guess people just got to, t to take them home from the factory because they would put them in uh, the official colors. And so they were just like the, so it was kind of like just the generic, the generic versions. So there's uh, Chaos Warriors. I like the Chaos Warriors with their armor. And let's see, what else did we have here? Uh, it's the cannon crew for the mighty cannon. Everybody likes this. Now the cannon doesn't actually fire. So if, <laughs> at one point in time, I had Battle Masters confused with another game called Weapons and Warriors, where you have plastic figures like this, similar to this, red and blue, and the cannons actually have spring-loaded, uh, you know, mechanisms where they fire marbles and knock over the pieces. And you have rubber band catapult type things that you can fire. That, that'd be really cool. Now, you're probably going to lose a lot of those marbles, break the rubber bands, and you're going to maybe break, break your pieces. But I'm sure you'd have a great time shooting those things off. I'm sure parents may be less, less happy about it. But anyway, that's Weapons and Warriors. That's a totally different game. Might have gone by a different name in different countries. But here's the guy that lights the cannon. Looks like. I saw someone who, who painted this up and they actually put like some cotton on the end of this to look like it, you know, smoke from firing the cannon. And then here's the guy who would, you know, ram the ball in there or take his bucket and wash it out before they load the new thing in there. See, they need a third guy like holding a, a cannonball or something like a big pile of cannonballs next to him. So you could trick that out however you wanted. But there's only one of those cannon crews in the base set, and you can get, I think you can get, you might be able to get a second one in the reinforcements pack. But again, I don't have it because it's so rare. But you can mi mix and match. But yeah, if you ever see green bases, like this is, these platforms are green, that means it's from the uh, European version, or it's from the reinforcements pack, which were only in, in Europe. Maybe even only in the UK. I'm not sure. 
But I like the fact that they differentiated the color. That's a nice thing. And then made the flagpoles different colors instead of all just beige. There's more variety. Now, I think in the previous video, I, I made an error. I said that, oh, the, the flags are different in the European version versus the North American version. But I think I'm wrong about that because I've looked at photos now and the banners look the same. So the stickers were the same. What I'm thinking of, what I should have said, is that the reinforcement packs have different flags because for the reinforcements, they're brand new units. So you might have a unit where it's just one, and I think they call him Lord of Chaos or Chaos Lord, and it's just one guy. And he's got the same strength, but he has like one only one body point. Or maybe he's six. He might be six instead of five and one body point. I'd have to verify that. Go to Board Game Geek. They, they know. They have everything. But um, they would have a different flag, different sticker for that guy. So if you, if you find different stickers, it may be from the Chaos War Band or from the uh, Imperial Lords reinforcements packs for Battlemasters. Now you start down a kind of a dangerous road because... Let's say you're kids and you're playing this game and you know what? I I got the uh, reinforcements pack, so I get more army. Well, that's not fair. So now the other kid has to buy the reinforcements. So he's got enough. But then you could buy another reinforcement and, and on and on and on. You got to put a hard stop on it eventually. I mean, the referee's got to blow the whistle. You can't just keep buying. I mean, the rich kid is always going to win, right? Or the kid with the rich parents who keeps buying the more stuff. They're just going to keep buying armies and no one will everyone will refuse to play with them because they've got too many guys and who wants to paint all those figures right so uh, it's kind of like the problem with warhammer fantasy battle the problem with uh war games in general i guess <laughs> but especially that where you've got to buy their their figures and like it's uh, warhammer 40k i mean half the hobby is painting the stuff are collecting the stuff and people get these huge boxes of figures that they haven't painted yet <clears throat> so if you if you're just a, a maybe a less obsessed hardcore hobbyist and you just want to play some games just get the the stuff that's already in the box get some spares if you want to trick it out yeah you can go a little nuts sometimes but i think the hobby itself it's someone estimated that for Warhammer 40k, 40,000 with like the futuristic grimdark setting, you know, version of of uh, of all this stuff, it's it's like $400 to get like a regular army basically, and then maybe 600 to get like a decent one. So, that's that's quite an investment. Plus you got to find people to play with and everything. I'm sure half of it is just showing off how cool you are. But there's always going to be somebody that's a better artist or had more time or was able to get, you know, their recruit some people to help them paint. So I don't know. I would just rather get get the whole thing in the box, play the game, enjoy it, put it away, do something else. That's that's me. So I guess I'm just a casual casual uh, fan of this sort of thing. But at the same time, I probably p play more than the average person who's never heard of this stuff or wouldn't give it a second thought. But anyway, that's Battlemasters. I just wanted to show you that. Oh, there's one more thing I could show you. One more thing, and that is the these footmen, these Imperial infantry. Oh, that guy needs a uh, repair. I'm gonna have to come up with a solution for that for that broken halberd. But yeah, these these Imperial soldiers, these Imperial warriors. They, they could they could use some love. So that's probably what I'll do next. So if I do another video about this, it's going to be, unless we're playing a game live or semi-live, I'm going to be uh, restoring all those stickers, and I'll be happy to show you what I come up with. So that's this stream. Since I've got a little bit of time, I might talk more about the HeroQuest remake, the uh, Hasbro Pulse project thing. But that'll be in another stream. So if you check this one out, thanks. If you're just tuning in, stay tuned. We will be doing another stream here uh, shortly. So I'm just going to clean up. And uh, these guys will be waiting for you. 
sometime.